so excited we're actually having everyone in the studio today. I know, right? Where's Andrew? Did you tell him to be here? No, did you? <sighs> Shoot, I'll call him. No need, Jackie. I've just finished programming the Social Space app. It allows the user to beam any of the hosts to your location with just a push of a button. Okay, I don't have time for your nonsense. I'll call him. Jackie, Eric, Andrew. What happened? How did I get here? I used the app. I could have drove, Jackie. To the social space. This is the show all about Wichita Falls, Texas, and the wide world. I am one of your hosts, Eric Crossland, and guys, we're on the set today. We oh are on gosh. the set. Let me just introduce everybody <laughs> right here to my left, Jackie Hager, our fearless leader. She's the head of Hoger Communications. Oh, you know better than oh, that. Oh, it's the same as your name. Oh, Hager. Yeah. And to our left, wow, the third best looking guy on the set now, <laughs> Andrew Bill. <laughs> He's our graphic hey artist. Um, yeah. Gosh, you're kind of second in command too, right? Anything ever happens to Jack? I don't know about that. <laughs> That's what I heard. Let's well, not go there. So yeah. I, heard, yeah. I was told when I got hired. And our first in studio guest, Fire Chief Ken yeah. Quillman. Hey, Ken. hey, how's everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Ken and I were co workers for about, I don't know, six six months? About that. And then I it's good to, a dodge. It's good to be here. Thanks, Ken. Thanks yeah. for joining us. So, so we're all on set now. Um, it's going to be a little bit different than it's been before. Right. It's not a 100% interview. We're going to interview Ken here in our second segment. Mm -hmm. In our first segment, we're going to discuss some topics. Okay, so first topic. Guys, uh, if, if Wichita Falls was 100% open this weekend, there's oh. no virus, just magically everything suddenly Friday is back to normal, what would you do? Ken, I'm going to start with you. What would you do this weekend? Oh, I tell you, I think it's got to be sit in a restaurant. Uh, Deb and I have tried our best to support all the local restaurants, lunches and dinners, but you can only eat so many meals out of a styrofoam clamshell. Yeah, that's true. Which one in particular? You got a favorite? Well, a lot of them have become favorites. You know, Gidget's and Carrot and 8th Street. I mean, you know, we just love all the downtown restaurants and uh, do our best to, to get down here as often as possible. Yeah, I've been uh, buying those family packs of casserole from uh, Gypsy yeah. and eating them all by myself <laughs> in like two days. Uh, Jackie, how about you? What would you do? You know, I'm the same way. I think I would grab Greg off the farm and uh, probably go to either the Pelican or, which I know we can do those things, but it's still we're not 100% open. Um, or I'd go to McBride's on Maplewood or we would literally just go and sit somewhere and visit and invite like four other couples and do what we've been missing all of this time. I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Andrew, uh, eating like everyone else? I'm not eating. Um, <laughs> I think the thing that I would like to do is probably uh, get my routine Lowe's schedule back going. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a weekend Lowe's kind of guy. Yeah. And uh, I haven't been back to Lowe's since all this started. And uh, yeah. I just need that quick fix and walk through the aisles, pick up a couple of things. Well, and well, get what it. would you pick up normally? What's a typical Anything. weekend for no, Andrew Bell? See, uh, for me, no home project is uh, too big for me. So uh, I'll try anything. So, yeah. There you go. Such an alpha male. I'm so awesome. <laughs> no project is, every project is too big for me. I, uh, well, gosh, I find myself recently single. Uh, so I'd probably have to find a young lady and take her out on dates. <laughs> I'd give her, uh, Jackie, you're, you're female. Tell me if this is appealing. Okay? okay. I like to give girls what I call the triple M shot. Okay? Oh. It's movies, McDonald's, motel parking lot. Oh. <laughs> no. That wow. would be a no. no. Can Pretty I move my no. chair a little bit? Yeah. And we wonder why you're single. <laughs> no, nobody wonders that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, and you want to move us on to us, our second question. All right. If you were the king 
or Queen, of Wichita Falls. As in, you don't have to have city councilors vote, you don't have to ask permission, you can just make it happen. Ooh. What is one thing you would either change about Wichita Falls or, or bring in or, or just what would you do as King? Let's start with King Andrew Bell. Hmm. Okay, so yeah. since I have three little girls at home, I'm thinking, you know, there's, there's been some progress on this already, but uh, just to snap in my fingers to make it happen would be a splash pad, whether that's in downtown ah. Wichita Falls or uh, in a local park. So, yeah, yeah, there's been talk of putting one over here at Impec for, uh -huh. for a couple yeah. of years. Oh, uh -huh. that would be such a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'd rather you put it at Bud Daniel Park. Right, which is right here. <laughs> yes, I mean, who? no, but that park is just so quaint and small. It's the perfect place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for a especially pad. when the I parks agree. department starts doing their concerts over here. Yes. Mm, let's make it happen. Jackie can make it happen. All right, Queen Jackie, what, what would you have? Okay, make well, happen? mine's more magical. Oh. So it might be a little more make believe, but I would tell the world that if you got in a vehicle and you drove to Wichita Falls and you bought something, the magic pixie dust would fall on you and you would never get the virus. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. There you go. There you go. So yours is more of a, a fairy godmother than it a is. king. <laughs> it is. We're going to support the economy. Yeah. We're going to make sure you stay healthy. And, uh, and all of our retailers would be so busy and our restaurants would be packed and everybody knows you can't get the virus in North Texas. Oh, that's sweet. I know. That's nice. Ken, if you were king instead of chief. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, if I became king of Wichita Falls, the first thing I'd do is a reorg and get rid of king. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a lot of responsibility. And, yeah. Um, I think this shared governance is, is really a much better process. Yeah. But, uh, I agree. You know, if there was one of those uh, you know, so it be written, so it be done kind of orders. Uh, I think it would be, you know, particularly coming through this process that we, or the season that we've been in, the edict would be, can we just offer each other a little more grace? Mm -hmm. And can we get back to being able to disagree without feeling like we have to dislike one another? Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think I, that'd be my edict as king is something along those lines. I agree. I, That's well, great. Everybody's so well, nice. Mine's going to be a lot darker. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if I were king, uh, I, okay, for people who don't use their blinkers, I'll give you two a week. On that third one, guillotine. <laughs> the guillotine. Off with their heads, um, and I'm the executioner. Oh. <laughs> That was my biggest pet peeve. It is. So thank you guys for all being so positive. Wow, didn't I know, know that about you. <laughs> that's, my, that's my biggest pet peeve is people don't use their blinkers. Okay. On that dark note, wow. we're going to, <laughs> don't, don't tell fire chief, uh, the police chief. Right. Uh, on that note, we are going to do our military minute and we will see mm. you when we're back. <laughs> Altitude chamber, what it does is it, uh, it allows us to take air crew members up to a simulated altitude unpressurized and it allows us to basically put them in an environment that's kind of the worst case scenario. We have them take off their oxygen equipment so that they can feel physiologically how it feels differently to be off of oxygen and know their individualized symptoms. So then if they were in, ever in an aircraft and they lost cabin pressurization or were in a situation where they didn't have oxygen, they would know how to recognize that individually in themselves. So hypoxia, which is just a, um, a drop in your O2 saturation in your blood, so you kind of get uh, you can potentially become unconscious if you don't correct, and that would be getting 100% oxygen. Also, things like DCS or rapid decompressions that can occur up in altitude, um, which would just be pressurization loss in your aircraft, uh, certain things like that. And for pilots, more specifically, things like uh, AGSM or pulling Gs, so preparing their bodies so that they're able to uh, perform the best when they have those different physiological anomalies occurring.
Receive 0% for 84 months on the 2020 Silverado when you finance with GM Financial. Call today and we can deliver to you. The commitment at Four Stars Auto Ranch. Experience it. When I walk into the building every day, I know that, that we're, we're doing something special. I think attending a small school has great advantages. We really get to build uh, personal relationships with the students. I love Winthorpe. It feels like we're a big family here. What a great day for learning we're going to have at Winthorpe ISD. Welcome back to the social space. Oh, it's so good to have people around. <laughs> you know, good to see all of y'all. Uh, once again, I'm Eric Crossan. We have Jackie Hager over here and Andrew Bell. And our special guest, first one back in the studio, yes. or honor. in the studio, is Kim Prillman. Thanks, yeah. Kim. And thanks for calling it an honor. So we've got a young lady here picking you up at the airport. And she's got your sign <laughs> here. <laughs> and she's ready for you. Uh, Kim, thank you for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, we all want to know, what is a typical day like for the fire chief? A typical day. Well, what I can count on when I pin this badge on in the morning is the day is going to be anything but typical. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think there's any two days that are exactly alike. Mm -hmm. You know, it's between uh, needs in the community and, and, and running a, a big business. You know, I have 160 yeah. employees and eight buildings and lots of trucks and, and apparatus and equipment, it, it's, it's running a big business. Mm -hmm. uh, we get about six months of the year that we operate under our budget and then six more months that we start working on the next budget. So right. it's strategic planning, it's, uh, it's, it's a little of everything. Mm -hmm. I like getting out into the street um, and so I don't allow myself to sit at the desk for very many days without getting out and interacting with the crews at the firehouses uh, and getting out onto the street, whether it's an automobile accident or a structure fire, just so that I can stay connected to what got me in this business in the first place, serving the public. Sure. Yeah, one, one of the things Ken does that we, we didn't have before is he brought some ceremonies to the um, to the fire department. Now we decommission buildings. He, he does a lot to recognize uh, individuals and, and that we just didn't do before you know when I worked at the city before for Ken came in I know a lot of people really appreciate uh, that sort of thing the, the fire service is so rich in tradition you know and, and and I think like so many businesses and industries striking a balance between honoring that tradition and that history and, and still being progressive and contemporary uh, is, is what what good leaders do um, and particularly in the fire service you know we we've we've been a, a, a fire service that is community members helping community members for for literally thousands of years. We can we can trace firefighting back to the first century, and so uh, it's uh, it's neat to reintroduce those back into the to the local community here. Mm -hmm. I'm picturing a caveman discovering fire, and then they have to have a fire department right after. That. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I love it that this week uh, we have a first responder on the show. I think it's so appropriate um, with what's going on. I know that after 9-11, there was a big wave of people wanting to sign up for the military to protect our country. Are you seeing through what's hap been happening here um, an increase in maybe applicants to maybe uh, want to ponder being part of the fire department? I think that every time we encounter a, a large-scale disaster in our country, you know, it, it, it it shines a light in terms of various areas that people can serve. 9-11 was uh, ended up being hugely beneficial to the fire service. Uh, after having lost 343 firefighters in the towers wow. that day, um, whether it was donations or people applying to, to be firefighters. I suspect that coming through this, uh, we'll see a, a rejuvenated interest in, in our medical communities, the mm -hmm. people yeah. wanting to serve as, as nurses and other practitioners, which I think is absolutely wonderful. Yeah. From our perspective, recruitment seems to be pretty easy. People, there are still a lot of young people that, that want to grow up to be firefighters. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd love to see more, more women, and we'd certainly love to see our force more diversified. But getting applicants in the door isn't the challenge for us. It's, it's finding the right characteristics in those applicants. Got it. 
Uh, Ken, we asked, I got out on Facebook today and I asked it, if, if anyone wanted to ask any questions after a couple of my friends, a couple of bozos asked some dumb questions. I did get a good one from John Cameron, morning meteorologist yes. over here at Channel 6 where we right. air on. And John, uh, what he asked, he said his father always told him, I'm reading, uh, that you should never uh, drive with a flat tire because it could catch on fire and it would be almost impossible to extinguish. Is that any truth to that? Well, I think there's some truth to that. If, if you have a tire that catches fire, it's virtually impossible to put it out. It's made of rubber, so it's a petroleum product. It's like lighting gasoline or diesel fuel on fire. But I don't know that I've encountered a tire catching on fire by being driven on. It seems to me you'd have to drive pretty fast, which would be impossible with I a flat tire. I think that's a tire. father catching his son driving on flat tires all the time and making something <laughs> up. Yeah, so what happened there. With all due respect to Mr. Cameron, <laughs> I'm not sure that that part of the story is valid. <laughs> of all questions John Cameron would want to ask. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, well, uh, thank you so much. Uh, stick around, Ken. We're going to take a look at some cute kiddos. Yes. And then we're going to talk about some stuff about the whole wide world. Yes. Mm. We grew up here. Raise our families here. Grew our business here. We've been here during hard times. And the fun times. And as we look to the future. One thing is for sure. We are still together while apart. Receive 0% for 72 months plus no payments for 120 days when you finance with Chrysler Capital on the 2020 Ram 1500. Call today and we can deliver to you. The commitment at Four Stars Auto Ranch. Experience it. Oh, welcome back to that social space guest in the studio. Yeah. I'm so pumped. A live person. <laughs> That's it's nice to be a live person. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, so uh, this, this, the topic of this, this segment right here is, you know, everyone knows Congress is proposing, talking about, you know, $2,000 a month, maybe universal basic income. Good idea, bad idea. Should we do it? Should we not do it? Um, Jackie, you want to start this one off? Oh, gosh. Well, I'm all for helping small families. I, I really am. And I think these are times that we never saw coming. Hmm. But can I also say, I believe in the value of getting up and hard work as well. And I think we can accept those funds and work hard at the same time. Don't get me wrong. We don't know the circumstances of every family. Mm -hmm. And I would never begin to prejudge a family. I think we ought to be grateful that we live in the United States during this time. Mm -hmm. And you know what they've already done for us, what they've already done for small business. We don't know if we're out of this totally. But um, so I have mixed emotion. Obviously, would I take the 2000? I would, and I would try to do good with it. Um, but you know, the, the farm girl and me or whatever line I got in when I was created, the value of hard work and getting up and navigating life and figuring out plays a big role in my DNA as well. Yeah, I'm with you on that, Jackie. Of course, I'm not going to turn down money that the government's no. handing out. You, you kind of almost be silly to do that, but I'm not going to stop working. No. You know, I mean, gosh, you did everything you could to keep us employed during this. And Fight. I'm Jackie, I'm going to work for you. I'm going to take that $2,000 <laughs> and take it on down to Gypsy, get a couple of casseroles. I don't know why I keep mentioning it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, you know, maybe if it's just to get through it, I don't think that I, per, I, I don't have children, you know, I don't think that I necessarily need it. But if they're giving it out and you can yeah. use it to stimulate the economy, then. Uh, uh, why not? We, we yeah, can't. you know, during this time, uh, or not pre this time, uh, my wife was uh, tutoring for the STARS test at Kirby Elementary, and that was a second income that was coming to our family. And since Governor Abbott canceled the STARS test, uh, they no longer needed Casey there at Kirby, and then of course school started to get canceled and all that kind of stuff. So this money has really helped our family. 
Um, I'm with Jackie though. I mean, there's pros and cons to it, but you know, there's, uh, you know, g getting up in the morning, putting on your jeans and your yes. funky shoes or boots. Uh, there's something said to that for that and, and, and going to work and, and um, being proud of what you do each day and, and what that does to your, your mental Mid health and stuff. everything. So. And you said funky shoes? Funky shoes. Funky that shoes. That's a lot different when I heard it. I didn't know that about the STARS test. I should talk to you more at work. What a, Karen, how about you? Well, I think you've kind of hit the, head on the, hit the nail on the head with, I think we need to help people that are in need. Mm -hmm. uh, $2,000 a month, though, in some cases is, is more than what some people are working, mm -hmm. making today. And so does that serve as a disincentive for them to come back? Mm -hmm. And in other cases, it, it doesn't begin to address the needs uh, of some of our families. So this one size fits all, mm -hmm. I struggle to get my head wrapped around that. Yeah. And then I'll give you an answer that probably sounds a lot like an answer my dad would have given me, and that is at $22 trillion in debt, where does this end for our kids and our grandkids? There has to be some sense of social responsibility to whatever we do. And I think that we got to get people back to work. Um, you know, that, that's, that's the best way to help them and help our communities uh, is figure out how to do that and do that safely, do that as quickly as we can. Yeah. I'm so glad you said that because, you know, Sunday we were talking about that after um, Mother's Day lunch, and I'm looking at my granddaughters and I'm thinking, what is the debt going to be when they're my age? I mean, somebody has to pay all this money back. Yeah, are we printing money at this point? I mean, what's going on? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. At this point, we are. Yeah. It's just We're printing, printing money. money. Yeah. Um, but just like you, we don't understand everyone's circumstance. So, you know, I think the one thing that can come out of this is let's all go back to work. Mm -hmm. You know? Gosh, I was in the, the, the restaurant, the bar business for many years, and those are the people I think of. We worked uh, not even paycheck to paycheck, night to night. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if one day you were just like, hey, you can't go to work, God, those, those people, you know? So yeah, case by case, but you know, you know um, I think everyone's kind of in the grants, you know? Yeah. yeah, but you know, when we were shut down at the office briefly, I still got up, got dressed every day. Oh, and don't I know it, Jackie. I did, and went to my computer and worked every day as though I were in the office. Heck, and oh then yeah. as we were working a little bit from the office, it's the fact that you got up like yep. it was a regular day, mm -hmm. stayed on schedule, and went to work because we had to fight. Yeah. You have to fight for your business. Shower does and wonders for your <laughs> mental <laughs> it does. stability, doesn't it? Yeah. All right. Hey, just click us over. We got one more topic here. Kind of a funner one, I guess. I don't know. Uh, this group called Plant Life out of the, uh, Britain, they, they're <laughs> claiming, and I got this off of uh, Jenica Lambert from the Riverbend Nature Center, that if you waited to mow till mid-June, it saves the bees. And there's a and the bees make honey and it just is good for the environment all along. But no mo may would this could this even possibly work? Is that would that be a bigger threat to, for like wildfires, Ken? If everybody's lawns were just well, I got to tell you, I saw this question and and <laughs> first thing I thought was you, you must think fire chief's a lot smarter than he really is because <laughs> this is way outside of my swim lane. But I always thought bees had something to do with things that flowered, mm -hmm. trees that bloomed yep. and, and, and plants that flowered. So I, I don't know the connection between grass and bees. I do know the connection between wild land and wildfires. Yeah. Um, it's usually not people's lawns that are catching on fire that, that we worry about or that keeps me awake at night. It's these, these urban interfaces with you know, the tall grasses that tend to dry out. So, I don't know that I have an opinion that's going to be worth a lot, but I don't think no mow may <laughs> uh, you know, drastically increases our risk of wildfires. Well, and see, you guys probably have nice lawns that are all grass. See, mine is all, all wild f flowers and weeds. <laughs> well, and so, maybe in that case. <laughs> so yeah. I'm all for not mowing. Uh, guys, what do you think? I don't know. No, not going to happen at my house. <laughs> We're going to mow the grass. Yeah. I think it's a sense of just living. Uh, 
within your boundaries in a nice way and being nice to your neighbors. I'm not so sure your neighbors would appreciate it. You don't want it. your three young girls to have new pet squirrels and you pet know, snakes and pets. <laughs> mowing kind of frees my mind a little yeah. bit and so I try to do it at least once a week if I can. Yeah. And so this would be really hard for me to do. So, okay, the yeah. consensus is no on no mo. All right, gosh, we're done, guys. It, it went even faster with everyone here. We thought it we were did. fast when they were virtual. We went faster this time. Well, cheers to the I mean, to the fire chief, sir. Thank yeah, you so much for oh. spending some time with us and thank you for and the just invitation. Just letting us know that you know we're, we're going to be okay through this. And, yeah, we are. Uh, we're all going to live through this. Mm -hmm and we'll tell our kids and our grandkids about it, but positive stories come out of everything and positive stories are gonna come out of this. Absolutely, thanks for having me, Jack. You're welcome. Thanks for coming, Ken. All right, guys, we will see you Whoa. next week.